we're gonna start the rounding off process. Gonna make it eight sided. So on this side, we're drawing a line. It's a three quarter inch board. And I'm coming over three quarters of an inch. And marking it. Yeah. Except for all those little pieces of epoxy on there, they make it difficult. I can't even get your one. Well, we'll do it this way. Anyhow, we're doing it, marking it on both sides. All the way down, end to end. We turn it over, do the same thing. In fact, we already turned over and did the other side. And then, this side, and I'm not gonna turn it over right at the moment, but this side here is, we're going to do it 3 eighths of an inch over because it's a smaller board, okay? And then we'll take off the ends. And Warren was kind enough to give you the measurements to do it. And it varies on mast to mast. Depends on how, what diameter you're gonna end up with. Okay, in order to avoid all the squeeze out over here with the uh, little square like this you get too many rough bumps and stuff there's not very much on the side so I built me a little marking gauge slides down the side of it better and then you can just it's a lot quicker and more accurate you probably can't see the line but anyhow that works better than the uh, you gotta have it to the right, naturally cut it and place it to the right measurement on the edge that you want. In this case, three quarters. Okay. Okay, I got a confession to make. I, uh, we used stainless steel nails to put the little triangular pieces on the inside. I've decided that didn't work out very well because they tended to wander. And I've been not driving them in further as we go here. And I have caught one or two with the plane. So don't do that. Use stitching glue like they suggested. Poor judgment on my part. And here we have an electric power plane and a hand plane working together in harmony. Well, that's... We've got it eight-sided now. So now it's time to do the 16-sided. We're going to mark it off and then do the planing and sanding afterwards. But... Uh, as you can see, the shavings are building up. Okay, brief explanation of what we've done. We, uh, we built the mask, as it said, in the plans. And then, at that point, you have a square box, basically. That's roughly four inches by four inches. Well... The first thing you got to do is turn it into an eight-sided type piece of wood here, <laughs> the mast. Anyhow, the easiest way to do that, and was explained in their drawing, but then Bud McIntosh in his book, How to Build a Wooden Boat, I recommend you buy this book. Uh, Bud died a few years ago, but uh, in any case, there's a lot of good information. There's a lot of good drawings in there by Sam Manning. And what you want to do is, is the distance in between here should be the actual width of your, your box, the four inches by four inches. We're going to call it four inches by four inches from here on. Anyhow, in order to get the proper areas to plane on each side of that box, 
you're going to do, can you read that? Probably not. You divide, hear, no. you divide that four inches distance. into, yeah, the distance that the box is into, in this case, well, it's going to be this case on every, every mast. It doesn't matter if it's eight inches, 12 inches or whatever, you divide it into 24 different units. Seven times those units go on this side, seven times on the other side, and 10 units here in the middle. So, in any case, seven, seven units, 10 units, four units. Seven units. Yeah, and then I put screws in here for demonstration purposes. You can put uh, pencils. However, I break a lot of lead. So what I do is I mark a spot here and then get a straight edge mark a spot here and mark it on on down then use a straight edge to mark these lines on either on the flat spots okay after we marked it with this and drew the lines with a straight edge you can also use a block like this that extends out to where that's sitting on there and comes out here to where those marks are and then you can mark it with a pencil running that down. I think you showed them that. Yeah, Pretty I showed easy. you that earlier. In any case, at that point, you're going to take the planes. Here's one that she uses and here's one that I use to take them down, sharp, sharpen the plane very well. You can also use, and we used it to begin with, you could have used on a something a little more manageable than a 20 some foot mast. Smaller masts you can run at a 45 degree angle to come close to the lines that you've got marked on here to take that down. On a table saw. Excuse me? On a table saw. On a table saw. Whereas uh, this is just a little too cumbersome so we had to do it by hand. We did use the power planer. We used, like I said, these planes. We used the belt sander after we got all of them done just to smooth it out just a little bit uh, and then Bud McIntosh's book how to build a wooden boat has a very good section on spars they talk about even laying it out to the 16s 16 sided describes it doing an eight sided it shows you how to make this tool here, which is what we've done, that allows you to turn a belt sander belt inside out and use it to sand with to help round it off. That's a crude example I made several years ago. And then a friend of ours made us another one that fits in the thing and he he came up with the idea of putting ends on it the only thing i should say is is that w the ends will help maintain the belt in there but they need to be like out of metal that won't sand down because this one over here eats me alive every time i use it the belt will start coming off in the plans they show you using belt sander belt a bit like this or where's the other there ah. well, we've got several of these we'll be using these we'll be using this and just go down do it a little bit at a time don't get in a rush because this will this will especially cut a groove into the wood if you're in too big a hurry. You demonstrate that? Yeah, I'm gonna demonstrate that. How it develops a groove? <laughs> yeah, demonstrate the groove? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna demonstrate the groove. And this belt, the duct tape that I've got on here is kind of loose. Worn, so it's gonna slip a little bit, but once it gets going, this is just a, a pipe separated by a couple of uh, nuts that are against each other on either end of it. 
that and the, the the drum here in the center is just a block of wood you know that's round and we got nuts on either side of it and it's into the drill so that the drill will turn it to start sanding now so it's not going to be perfectly round but it's going to be more than adequate i'm sure the wind won't care because it's going to be inside the sleeve of the the sail anything else to add nope nope you're awful easy this is an extremely dusty job dress appropriately long sleeves gloves some sort of protective mask to filter out the dust and eye protection also uh, check out the the bench that we're using we've actually got two of them they're called Manning benches Sam Manning designed them he's the guy that did all the illustrations in uh, Bud McIntosh's book and there's a video on YouTube from Off Center Harbor and it's called Cool Shop Tips Number One, Manning Benches. Thanks for watching.